If you only have time to learn one Excel function, let it be the if function. Not only is it super powerful and flexible, but it's also easy to master. The if function is often used to create categories, flag rows based on a condition, and answer questions about your data dynamically. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics of the if function and its sister, the if s function. Whether you're a beginner or you're looking to sharpen your Excel skills, this tutorial will help you get comfortable with the amazing if function. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. Optimize all of your spreadsheets with my free masterclass, The Spreadsheet Tune-Up. In just five videos, you'll learn how to upgrade any spreadsheet. Start now and you'll have more efficient and user-friendly spreadsheets right away. So to get started, I'm actually going to create my own test data because uh, a lot of times people ask for data or ask for a file and I don't think you really need that. So I'm going to start with date. And then I'm just going to make a series starting with January 1st. And then I'm going to say day and I'm going to use the text function to convert this into a day of the week. And then let's say I'm going to make a number. I'm going to use the rand function to just create any old random number, but actually then I'm gonna multiply it by 10. No, let's do 100. Yes, I want it to be like a whole number. I'm gonna take away these decimal points, copy and paste just the values. Okay, so now I am going to create this into an Excel table using Control T. All right, so here is my test data. Now, what I'm gonna do with this is use the if function to answer a, a few random questions that I may have about this data. And the reason I'm using the if function is that it's perfect for answering questions. Anything that you wanna know about your data, you can use the if function for. So I'm gonna label this column test, okay. So we'll start with if, and then open parentheses, then let's get to know these arguments. The first argument is called a logical test, and that is where you put some expression. It's like the question part. What are you, what are you asking of your data? So let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to return a yes for any Sundays in this list of dates. So I'm gonna say if, and then the log logical test will be if this value, is equal to sun in double quotes because anytime you use you want to refer to text it, it has to be in double quotes and then the second argument is value if true so what do you want to return what do you want to be in this cell if the logical test is true and I want to I want the word yes and then value if false is the last argument. What do you want the result to be if it's not Sunday? I'm just gonna say no for simplicity. And then close that in parentheses and hit enter. Now scanning through, you can see it's equal to no for all the other days except for Sundays. And if you're wondering how I got this formula to magically copy down, that's because I formatted my data as an Excel table first. And that's the basics of the if function. I'll show you another example with this number because I want to show you a different operator. So an operator in Excel or in, in math is the equal sign greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Um, and you can you can use all of these here so as I showed you you could use the equal sign you could use greater than less than if you use greater than or equal to you just do greater than and then the equal sign so let's use that one actually and let's say 50 if the number is greater than or equal to 50 let's put the value of big and then if it is false let's put the value of small and now you can see 
it did exactly what I wanted where the numbers that are greater than 50 are big, numbers smaller than 50 are small, and this one, which is equal to 50, is equal to big because of this greater than or equal to. So that's how you would use a different operator. You can also, instead of returning a literal value like a, a string or a character string, you can make the value be a number. So the value if true could be, actually let's just link to another cell. Let's say you want it to be whatever the day is if it's greater than 50. And then if you don't want it to return anything, you would do double quotes. So this question, <laughs> the question that you're answering with this formula is, if the number is greater than or equal to 50, return the day of the week. And if it's not greater than or equal to 50, leave the cell blank. So now enter. And now you can see the ones that were formerly big, the larger numbers, the value is equal to that day of the week column. So it's very dynamic. And then if it's a small number, the re it returns nothing. Let's talk about a little bit more of a complex situation. Let's say you have multiple criteria you want to test for. So let's say we want to flag the Saturdays and the Sundays. What would that look like? Well, we need to use another function inside the if function, and that is or. The or function takes two different logical tests and combines them into one result. So let's say the first logical test is if the day is equal to Saturday. The second logical test is if the day is equal to Sunday. And then we close that in parentheses. So now we have two logical tests combined by the OR function in this one argument for logical test. And this is exactly, or this, this operates exactly as you would expect based on, you know, the English language. If the day is equal to Saturday or the day is equal to Sunday, then return, I'm going to say weekend. And then value of false is weekday. So we're creating a little category. So now you can see we have weekday until we get to Saturday and Sunday, and then it's equal to weekend. The other uh, function you can use to combine multiple criteria is and. This checks whether all the arguments are true and rever returns true if all the arguments are true. So this will never return the, the result that we want because the day could not be equal to Saturday and Sunday. But what if we only wanted the weekends or the day, the Saturdays where this number is greater than 20. And then we would put some random category. Let's just say yes or yes. And then nothing if it's not. So now the qu this question reads, if the day is equal to Saturday and the number is greater than 20, then yes, otherwise blank. Okay, we only have one result for a Saturday that where the number is greater than 20. But you can see how those two criteria have been combined using the AND function. You may notice that with the IF function, there can only be two possible results. There's only the value of true and the value if false. Now there is a way to nest if functions. So let me show you what that looks like with this range. So let's say we wanted to rank the number based on these ranges. I'll show you what that looks like with using multiple if functions that are nested. And this is what that function look like, looks like. Um, the, so the first argument is if the number is less than or equal to nine, then return the value of low. And then in the value if false argument, that's where you put the next if function. So that if it's not less than or equal to nine, the uh, evaluator will move on to check this condition, which is if the number is less than or equal to 39, and that corresponds to medium. Then in the last, in this function's value if false argument, then you put the last if function, where if the number is less than or equal to 100, then put the value of high, and then if it's none of these things, then it will return nothing. Then you close all three of those arguments. So this is called a nested if function. And 
it can be really, they can be really difficult to use. I do not recommend it. Um, instead, Oh, however, you may need to use that kind of logic if you have an older version of Excel. But if you have Excel 2019 or later, you should be using the if s function. This checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns a value corresponding to the first true condition. So instead of uh, putting those all into separate if functions, we can put all of these tests into one function. So let's just start with the first one, which is the low category. So if the number is less than nine, then the next argument is what's the value if that's true? We're going to return low. Then it goes to the second logical test and you can see the square brackets here. That means that the, these arguments are optional. Um, so the second logical test is if the number is less than or equal to 39. Oh, I forgot the equals two here equals two. If the number is less than or equal to 39, we will return medium. And then since I put a comma here, it's opening up the next set of logical tests and value of true, which will be if the number is less than or equal to 100. And we'll put the value of high. Now let's just close that. You can see it did the exact same thing. We've got our, all of our categories but it's all contained in one nice, neat function. To demonstrate this last trick, uh, I changed one of these numbers to be 200. So now you can see that this number doesn't meet any of these criteria. It's not less than or equal to nine, it's not less than or equal to 39, and it's not less than or equal to 100. So instead of just returning nothing, the function errors. So it returns an NA. If you don't want that to happen, here's what you can do. After the last logical test, put a comma and then start a new logical test. But in this one, you're not going to put any actual expression. You're just going to type the word true. And that means that if the function is evaluating and it gets all the way to the end, it's just automatically going to put this next value. And I'm just going to put a double quotes so that it returns nothing. So then just by adding this, these last two arguments, true and then double quotes, anytime a, a number or anything does not meet these criteria, it will return nothing. So let's say it's even um, blank. Oh, that returns low. Okay, that's fine. Even negative numbers will also return low because the criteria is just less than or equal to nine. But anything that's above 100 will return nothing. So I recommend doing that um, for any anytime you're using the FS function, just so you can control what's being returned and you won't have an NA. And this creates kind of like a default, a default return for what to do if none of these criteria are met. Here's a tip. The if s function is only available for Excel 2019 and later. So what do you think? How will you be using the if and if s functions in your work?